Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 11 to 20 for the CompTIA Network Plus exam. Let's begin. Which of the following ports is used for secure email? The correct answer is D, 587. Port 587 is used for secure email submission with SMTP over TLS encryption. This ensures that emails sent from clients to mail servers are securely transmitted. Why the other options are incorrect? A. 25. Port 25 is used for SMTP relay between mail servers, but it is not intended for secure email submission by clients. B. 110. Port 110 is used for POP3, which is an email retrieval protocol but does not provide secure email transmission. C. 143. Port 143 is used for IMAP, which retrieves emails from a mail server but does not handle secure email sending. Therefore, the correct answer is D. 587. A client wants to increase overall security after a recent breach. Which of the following would be best to implement? Choose 2. The correct answer is A. Least privileged network access and C. Central policy management. Implementing least privileged network access ensures that users and devices only have access to the resources they need. This minimizes the risk of unauthorized access and limits the impact of a breach by restricting movement within the network. C. Central Policy Management Centralized policy management allows for consistent security enforcement across the organization. It helps quickly apply, update, and monitor security policies, reducing misconfigurations and ensuring compliance with security best practices. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Dynamic inventories. While useful for tracking assets, dynamic inventories do not directly enhance security or prevent breaches. D. Zero-touch provisioning. Zero-touch provisioning automates device setup, improving efficiency, but it does not increase overall security after a breach. E. Configuration Drift Prevention This helps maintain consistent configurations, but it does not actively enhance security. It primarily ensures system stability. F. Subnet Range Limits Limiting subnet ranges can help control traffic flow but it is not a comprehensive security measure to mitigate a breach. Therefore, the correct answers are A. Least privileged network access and C. Central policy management. Which of the following is a cost-effective advantage of a split-tunnel VPN? The correct answer is D. Cloud-based traffic flows outside of the company's network. A split tunnel VPN allows certain traffic to go through the VPN while other traffic goes directly to the internet. This reduces the bandwidth load on the company's network, making it a cost-effective solution. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Web traffic is filtered through a web filter. In a split tunnel VPN, general web traffic often bypasses company security controls, so it would not necessarily be filtered through a web filter. B. More bandwidth is required on the company's internet connection. A split tunnel VPN actually reduces bandwidth usage on the company's network since non-essential traffic does not go through the VPN. C. Monitoring detects insecure machines on the company's network. Since split tunneling allows some traffic to bypass the company's network, it can actually reduce visibility and monitoring making security enforcement more challenging. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Cloud-based traffic flows outside of the company's network. A network technician is troubleshooting a web application's poor performance. The office has two internet links that share the traffic load. Which of the following tools should the technician use to determine which link is used for the web application? The correct answer is D. Trace RT. The trace RT command tracks the path that packets take to reach their destination, showing each hop along the route. Since the office has two internet links sharing the traffic load, trace RT can help determine which link is being used for the web application by displaying the route taken to the destination server.
why the other options are incorrect. A. Netstat. Netstat displays active network connections and ports, but it does not show the path that traffic takes, making it unsuitable for determining which internet link is being used. B. NS Lookup. NS Lookup is used for querying DNS records to resolve domain names to IP addresses, but does not provide routing information. C. Ping. Ping checks network connectivity and response time, but does not show the path or which internet link is being used. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Trace RT. Which of the following attacks can cause users who are attempting to access a company's website to be directed to an entirely different website? The correct answer is A. DNS poisoning. DNS poisoning is an attack that corrupts the DNS resolution process, causing users attempting to visit a legitimate website to be redirected to a malicious or unintended site. Attackers modify DNS cache records to reroute traffic, often used for phishing and malware distribution. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Denial of service. A DOS attack floods a website with traffic to make it unavailable but does not redirect users to a different website. C. Social engineering. Social engineering tricks users into revealing information or clicking malicious links, but it does not involve modifying DNS records or redirection at the network level. D. ARP spoofing. ARP spoofing manipulates local network traffic by associating the attacker's MAC address with a legitimate IP address, but it does not directly modify DNS records or impact external website access. Therefore, the correct answer is A. DNS poisoning. As part of an attack, a threat actor purposefully overflows the content addressable memory table on a switch. Which of the following types of attacks is this scenario an example of? The correct answer is C. MAC flooding. MAC flooding is an attack that overwhelms a switch's content addressable memory table by sending a large number of packets with spoofed MAC addresses. This forces the switch into fail open mode, making it behave like a hub and broadcast all traffic to every port, allowing the attacker to capture sensitive data via packet sniffing. Why the other options are incorrect? A. ARP spoofing. ARP spoofing associates a malicious MAC address with a legitimate IP address, tricking devices into sending traffic to the attacker, but it does not overflow the CAM table. B. Evil Twin An evil twin attack sets up a rogue Wi-Fi access point that mimics a legitimate network to trick users into connecting, which is unrelated to MAC flooding. D. DNS Poisoning DNS poisoning modifies DNS cache records to redirect users to malicious websites, but it does not involve switch cam tables or MAC addresses. Therefore, the correct answer is C, MAC flooding. A company's office has publicly accessible meeting rooms equipped with network ports. A recent audit revealed that visitors were able to access the corporate network by plugging personal laptops into open network ports. Which of the following should the company implement to prevent this in the future? The correct answer is D. NAC. NAC is used to enforce security policies on devices before they are granted network access. NAC can check device compliance, enforce authentication, and block unauthorized devices, such as personal laptops, from connecting to the corporate network. This prevents unauthorized users from gaining access simply by plugging into an open network port. Why the other options are incorrect? A. URL filters. URL filtering controls which websites users can visit, but it does not prevent unauthorized devices from connecting to the network. B. VPN. A VPN provides secure remote access but it does not prevent unauthorized users from plugging into physical network ports inside the office. C. ACLs ACLs restrict traffic between devices, but they do not actively block unauthorized devices from connecting to the network like NAC does. Therefore, the correct answer is D. NAC.
A user notifies a network administrator about losing access to a remote file server. The network administrator is able to ping the server and verifies the current firewall rules do not block access to the network file share. Which of the following tools would help identify which ports are open on the remote file server? The correct answer is B, Nmap. Nmap is a powerful network scanning tool that can identify open ports and running services on a remote system. In this case, the network administrator can use Nmap to scan the file server and determine if the required file sharing ports are open and accessible. Why the other options are incorrect? A. DIG DIG is used for DNS queries, not for scanning open ports on a server. C. Trace RT Trace RT is used to track the path that packets take to reach a destination, but does not check for open ports. D. NS Lookup NS Lookup is used to query DNS records and resolve domain names to IP addresses, but it does not check for open ports on a server. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Nmap Which of the following technologies is the best choice to listen for requests? and distribute user traffic across web servers? The correct answer is D. Load Balancer A load balancer is specifically designed to listen for incoming requests and distribute traffic across multiple web servers. This helps improve performance, redundancy, and availability by ensuring no single server is overwhelmed with too many requests. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Router a router directs network traffic between different networks, but it does not manage load balancing across multiple servers. B. Switch A switch is used for local network connectivity and packet forwarding, but it does not distribute traffic based on server load. C. Firewall A firewall controls network security and access permissions, but it does not balance traffic between web servers. Therefore, the correct answer is D, load balancer. Which of the following is the next step to take after successfully testing a root cause theory? The correct answer is D, implement the solution to the problem. After successfully testing a root cause theory, the next step in the troubleshooting methodology is to implement the solution. Once the technician confirms the theory is correct, they apply the necessary fix to resolve the issue. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Determine resolution steps. Resolution steps should already be part of the tested theory. Once confirmed, the solution should be implemented immediately. B. Duplicate the problem in a lab. The issue has already been identified, so there is no need to recreate it in a lab at this stage. C. Present the theory for approval. In most cases, presenting the theory for approval is not required unless dealing with critical infrastructure or policy-driven environments. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Implement the solution to the problem. We have come to the end of today's video. Please make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Goodbye.